Hello. Today we're going to have a look at block four of the block of the month, the Great Foundations. This is a foundation piece block block of the month, and there's a pattern available to purchase and download from the website gourmetquarter.com. It's called Great Foundations, and there's nine blocks. And these blocks are measuring ten and a half inches, so they're going to be a ten inch finished block when they're in the quilt. And so this is block four, and this is one of the um, settings behind me. So we've done block one, and we've done block two, and we've done block three, and up the top here is block four. So you can see this is block four. Um, so that's what we're going to go through today, just so I can show you how that's pieced. So it's continuing on with foundation piecing, so not a lot of differences, but I'll just show you um, how I've done um, the, the putting together of the pieces. It just helps a little bit to have a little bit of visual, I think, sometimes. So I've got one of the segments here. So this block has eight sections, and they're all quite similar, slightly different colours. Um, some of the sections have this corner triangle on, and some of them are the triangle shape without the corner on. So they're kind of similar in their construction, uh, just slightly different colours each time. So we'll go through, this is um, piece B that I'm working on here. So everything is lettered, so the, the shapes on um, part A are numbered 1 through to 4 probably, and this one is B, 1 through to 5. So it's a good idea to work through alphabetically and numerically, so that you put on piece 1, so this is B1 here, and then B2, and B3, and then B4, and B5. So we're going to put them on in that order. It's quite helpful when you're doing the foundation piecing to follow the sequence so that you cover the seams and things that you need to cover as you go. So I've got some pieces ready here to go on. So we're going to work with... Um, this is one of the background colours here, so I've got a, a piece here, so we'll, I've suggested in the pattern here that you might like to cut some strips and then cut some pieces from those strips, like we have been doing with the other blocks. Just keep an eye out with some of these strips, some of them are varying a little bit in size. This is a four and a half inch strip for the background, um, and I have put a little asterisk on it, but just keep a, a bit of an eye because there are just a few changes with some of the blocks. Um, so all the pattern pieces and things are going to be in your pattern when you download it. But, so you're going to have all the segments for you to work on, plus a few short notes and a couple of variations of uh, different colours that you might like to use if you didn't want to use these nice Japanese talk ones. So we're going to start off putting this behind. So we put it so that the wrong side of the fabric is to the wrong side of the paper and I need to put these two pieces together and I like to use a little light source so I've got this little light here that works very well for this purpose and so I'm going to place this behind piece number one and we have to make sure that everything is going to be covered and I'm going around the wrong way so I think we want to go this way and so that you can see I want the seam allowance to go just past we're going to sew this first seam between part one and part two so I want that all to be covered. I want it to extend beyond this line here and beyond the block out here. So I'm going to pop a pin in there. I've got my two pieces together. By lining up the two edges like that on this first segment, this is pretty much the only time you can do this. You don't have to trim anything afterwards, so it works quite well. So then I'm going to go to the sewing machine. Now remember when we're sewing, we like to shorten the stitch length for this one, and that helps perforate the paper also when we tearing out the paper afterwards, it just makes it a little bit stronger when the stitches are closer together. So there's a couple of good reasons for doing that. And now I'm going to sew on the line, so I'm going to start just before that section, or maybe a quarter of an inch before, because we're generally working on a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Let's that off. And I'm going to sew on that line all the way along, right out to the edge, past the edge of the block space. So I've got that shortened seam a stitch length right on the line not next to it not near it on the line and so we've got piece one and two on already it didn't take very long did it and so because we've done it this way we don't have to trim off that seam allowance we've got a nice seam sitting there but we do need to press as we go it sits much better if we can press the blocks as we go 
So I'm just pressing, so I've just got the seam underneath there and I'm just pressing that over. So it looks a little strange from the right side, however, it will improve with time. And so now we need to put part, piece number three on and that again is another background piece. So I've got here, we have cut some squares into triangles to make the pieces big enough for us to use them. So I'm going to sew this piece on here. So we actually again want to look through the light source for positioning. And we're going to sew this line here. So we want our seam, our fabric to extend into this seam allowance here because that's going to flip over and cover that space there. So we want that to be coming up there. If you can see all this, I'm just going to turn it around because it's a bit easier to see it this way. So what we want is this seam here covered. Now we've got a very dark piece of fabric here, so it may not be that easy to see, although I think I can go a bit brighter with this light. That might help. Now because this is a triangle here, I just wanted to mention that we should line it up, not, not sort of tight at this end, but have more sticking out at this top end, because when this flips over, we need that triangle to be covering this area here. So I'll, I'll just pop a pin in just so that I can show you what I mean. Just along that seam line. So I've pinned that, I've got more sticking out over here. And when I flip that over, that needs to cover this area here. If we position it further along, it ends up missing a little bit and you don't really want that happening because that's not really a lot of fun. So we need to make sure that we've got enough seam sticking out beyond this seam line here and then we can sew that line as well. And continue on just attaching pieces as we've been doing with the other blocks as well. So starting a bit before that line that goes across and then coming right along the line right off to the edge of the block. So I've pressed my piece over so everything's covering the areas that it needs to cover quite nicely. So now we need to put the piece on up here. So again, right sides together. I'm going to position that across. Just going to grab my light here. Quite tricky with these darker fabrics. And I'm just going to stitch that across. So I need to extend it beyond this line into that little area there and stitch across that line. And then the same thing with the other triangle at the other end. So I've gone ahead and sewn on my dark red piece here in my corner up here. And so now it looks a little odd. We just need to trim that down. So there's a dotted line outside the straight line and that's the cutting line. So I'm just going to trim along there and tidy this little segment up. It's kind of fun watching these come together. So I'm just putting my quarter inch mark on my ruler right along the solid line and then it trims right along that dotted line that's on the pattern because that's quarter of an inch away from the line. And then some of the corners on these pattern pieces have little markings so that you can just trim off that little corner up there as well. It's probably worth taking them off, you don't have to do that, um, but it does help when you're joining up the pieces to have it sitting nicely in the corners as well. So that's the wedge that's going to be part of here. You can see that that would come in here on the block. So to make the block, you need to make this four of these. And this is the other shape, which is obviously very similar. And there's four of these. So there's a total of eight segments all together. So I've already gone ahead and made my other segments for this block. And so they're going to be joined together and again, just line things up nicely. You've got your stitching line to sew along. Make sure that all your little bits and pieces are nicely lined up. I have found with these blocks where there's quite a lot going on in the center, that it's actually easiest to start sewing from that center end out to the outside. It just, everything goes together somehow that little bit better. If anything's going to move, which we hope it won't, it will move to the outside rather than messing up the center of our block. So that's going to go to there. So you're going to then join those up and make four segments like that. So I've already gone ahead and done another segment here. Oops, it's 
it's actually going to go on that side sorry it doesn't really matter but you should do all the, all of them the same so that goes on there so that's kind of a quarter it's just not a straight quarter this one's going to go here and then you can join those two up into a half which is going to sit there like that and that's how you're going to construct that block so that's going to be block four eight six eight, eight sections four like this four like this all joined up and you should find everything should meet quite nicely in the center and everything and don't forget as you're joining them up when you've joined these two together for instance before you join up the next bit to so just tear out that little piece of paper particularly in the center area where the seam is going to go across so that you're not getting too much paper bulk in there and also it's easier to get that seam allowance out now than it is later when you've joined it all in and there's lots of little bits and pieces so and pressing the seams open I found really helps with these blocks so remember to just pull out your little seam bits each time and again I've done that here when I've joined those together and then when I join the two halves together I'll do the same with these seams I'll tear those little bits out and you can take the whole lot of paper out when you're ready and I like to leave it in until I'm ready to do something with the blocks because sometimes with the blocks have got little um, unstable edges that like sometimes our fabrics are not sitting exactly on the grain and things so things can move a little bit so I find the paper holds it until I'm ready to put it into my quilt and then there won't be any problems so that's block four enjoy that the pattern will be uh, if you've already purchased the pattern it'll be uh, coming your way and if you haven't you can purchase it from gourmetquarter.com for great foundations block of the month thank you